peacekeepers in Bosnia. The British Army has been here for more than a decade through one of the bloodiest civil wars of the last century. They are part of the multinational NATO force, S4. Their job, to stop a new outbreak of war. Every six months, a fresh regiment arrives. For the first time, the British Army has allowed cameras to follow its Bosnian peacekeepers in action. Today, the Light Dragoons are trying to trace a Serbian war criminal. I will release my dog! Stop any push them, sir! Guarding the British base, the dogs that kill. And chips with everything catering for the British Army in Bosnia. One of the key tasks of the army here is intelligence gathering, talking to as many people as possible on the ground. Intelligence work is mainly the job of small teams of soldiers based away from the main base in troop houses, like C Squadron of the Light Dragoons. Right, as you know, Dickie, lean from here. One road to Orohova, yeah. get to Orohova. We'll park up in that square, it's on the left hand side. You know, it's like a bit of a waste ground. Yeah. We've got a small little crappy cafe there. Yeah. We'll just park up there, wander up and see that um, Serb shopkeeper. Sure, where, where are you actually going? Today? We went to Orohova, it's a Muslim village um, to the west of this area. And what about the area in general around here? How would you say it was? Well, for um, threats against S4 and threats against a safe, secure environment, there's none of that sort of thing, but there is a lot of criminality. So um, people get stabbed, um, there might be shootings and things, or shooting into the air, but it's all to do with criminals and gangs. It's a present patrol in the town to show them our presence, and we're still here, make sure everyone's happy, uh, build the confidence with the S4 that, that it's already got, just to maintain that confidence. And we've got a few contacts in the town, people who like talking to us, we'll just find out if they've got any problems, any, any little snippets they need to tell us information-wise. Today, the Light Dragoons in their scimitar tanks are off to the village of Orohova, where they've been told there's a Serbian shop assistant who has the same name as a police officer who is wanted for war crimes. The area they drive through is predominantly Muslim. There was considerable fighting here during the civil war, and many of the original residents were forced to flee. A few Serbs still remain in the area. For the men of the Light Dragoons, this is their patch, and it's their job to know absolutely everything that's going on. As they arrive in Orohova, they head straight for one of the shops, where they've been told the man they're looking for works part-time. Banja Luka in northern Bosnia, the main base for the British peacekeepers. It also houses the other contingents of S4, Canadian and Dutch soldiers. Guarding the base against unwanted intruders is the job of the British troops and their specially trained attack dogs. S4, halt, or I will release my dog. Stop in the Boss is one of 12 highly trained dogs on the base. Some are sniffer dogs for hunting explosives, but Boss, a Rottweiler, is one of the security dogs. At night, they patrol the base with their handlers. To keep them at a high state of readiness, they're constantly trained on base by the Army's specialist dog handling unit. Stand still! Leave! Bosco! Bosco! Heel! Das! Das. Stand still, leave, and I would arrest him for whichever offence he's committing. And then I would search him. Maybe he's got a weapon, I would search him then. See if he's carrying a weapon. Um, and then I would escort him back to the uh, guard room so that we can deal with him properly. Yeah? And treat any injuries he might have. Our job is to patrol uh, the per perimeters of the fence uh, around the camp, and uh, that is where mainly the intruders will, you know, possibly come over the fence. So our job is to to ensure that they don't. Why would they be intruding? Well, they they 
they've, there's all sorts of reasons. They, they pinch fuel, um, ammunition, just food, anything they can really get their hands on. Parts for cars, parts for vehicles, anything. Back in Orahova, the Light Dragoons are trying to trace a Serbian war criminal. He has the same name as this shopkeeper's assistant. Do you have any problems as a Serb? Da li imate ikakav problem kao Srbinu, recimo u muslimanskom mjestu? Ja sam tu rođen, ja nisam imao problema. Ni ti so, koji imao sa mnom od muslimana. So he, know, he knows all the people from this village, so he has never had a problem with, with the Muslims, and he has yeah. never had a problem because he stayed on, uh, in yeah. this village of Romana. Ja mi se znamo svi. Because they, they know each other. Yeah, good. And it's my friend. Ne samo mene, znaju mog oca, djeda, i prand, možda i prandi da bi znaju. They don't know, they, they do know him, but they know also his father, his yes. grandfather, so yeah, generations living there. The main thing is that uh, they don't have any really big issues or big problems out here. Excellent. Uh, one last question before I go. Is Nenad still here? Još jedno posljednje pitanje prije što odemo, jel Nenad još uvijek ovdje? Nije otišao. No, on radi do pola tri. He works starting half two. Does he work here every day? Znači radi svaki dan ovdje. Da? Yeah. Prosim subote, slobodni. Except the Saturday when he is having a day off. Oh, that's good then. Dobro. Well, check his name on his computer. Provjerili su njegovo ime u kompjuteru, kaže. He's got the same name as a policeman in Gradišću? Ima isto ime i prezime kao policajac u Gradišću koji radi u Gradišću, a to nije ista osoba, on ne radi kao policajac. Ne, on je iz Bihaća. He is originally born in Bihać. Yeah, he told us that before. A ovaj iz Gradišće, ne znam, možda ima... And the one from Gradišća, maybe they've got some family here. No, it's the same surname. Možda si ne znaju. Isto ime i prezme. Probably they don't know each other. To ga ima svuda svijet. It happens all over the world. Yes, yeah. Okay, thanks very much for that. Hvala. Hvala vam na... Sean is reassured that the shop assistant is not the same person as the wanted man. The patrol continues. The troops will see if their local contacts have any information for them. Back at the main base, Boss, one of the 12 guard dogs, has finished his training for the day. This dog is quality. If you go within five yards of him, he's, he'll have you. Because he's, he's, so, he's so handler protective, his, his boss, that if you, if you walk within five yards of him, even me, and I, I, work, I, lo, I know him very, very well, I've known him for about eight months. If you go within five yards, he'll, he'll have you. Boss's handler, Vinny, has only been working with him for four weeks. He's a scary looking dog, but um, I gave him a handful of food and then, you know, bonded with him, took him out, threw his toy for him, wrestled with him, you know, sit in his cage with him, read a book in there with him, you know, so he gets used to me, I get used to him. And now he's, yeah, best of buddies. I've been doing this since, uh, since May. It's a really fulfilling job. I really enjoy it. And have you done it before? I've you never done it before. No, I've never worked with dogs. You never worked with dogs. Never, before, never been worked with dogs before. I have their own at home. It's but it's so, totally different to having one that can attack and, and be a security side of things. It's because they, they bark and they show the teeth and that. People think that uh, oh, Cracky's going to bite me. They will bite you on the words of command. That's that's the tricky job. They will they work off our words of command. When we tell them to bite, they will well, they will go. In Orahova, the intelligence gathering continues. I don't get bored doing this because you always meet new people, and if you just try and break the ice and have a joke with them, it's quite good. But I do get bored when they ask you stupid questions, or you ask you have to ask them stupid questions like, "Where's the Muslim enclave?" And they're all Muslims. The soldiers have to take an interest in every aspect of town life, in case they come across anything suspicious. Sean wonders why one of the mosques is being rebuilt when the town already has two. Uh, if they're a crash, so they don't mind 
other religious or other place. Uh, no, other, no, other I, I'm not saying anything about the religion. I just wonder why there was three mosques. No, 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 no. Nije on mislio na na tu, na tu stvar, nego je mislio tri džamija, recimo, toliko ljudi, pa pa mi se učinilo da... Ja, ali ljudi, mi imamo ljude u dijaspori koji su ostali prilikom izbjeglištva, koji su dobili svoje status boravka u Austriji, Njemačka, Švicarska... Who were given some sort of status of citizenship in Austria, Germany, Sweden, so... Sad ti ljudi će se vratiti u našu sada. They are intending to come back in here, in a future, so that's why they are building or rebuilding the mosques. So the third mosque will cater for Muslims returning to the area now that peace has been restored. So far, the troops have found nothing unusual in Orahova, and they're pleased that they've been able to present a friendly face to the locals. <laughs> After the break, the attack dog that's forgotten how to attack. And there's no such thing as a free lunch. Or is there? Considering we don't have to pay for it, it's not good. <laughs> Back at the British Army's main base in Bosnia, the attack dogs have finished their morning's training and it's lunchtime. They're, they're fed on parity with the with the soldiers. Uh, they're, they're, their food's very nutritious. It's um, it's got uh, steak additives. It's lunchtime for the dog handlers too, and a chance to choose between the nutritious and the not so healthy. The British soldiers are free to mix with their Dutch and Canadian colleagues who share the base with them. The officers, though, eat separately with real knives and forks and china plates. the team of dog handlers usually together. You always all together? Generally, there's a section, yeah, we usually crack down here. We have a laugh. Especially there in the corner. Tasty food as well, isn't it? This is, yeah, it's quite nice. And is it important, do you think? Yeah, for the work that we do, yeah. We need our nourishment for the night time. Do you come in here at night? Do you get a meal at night? Yeah, it's a 24-7 cookhouse, yeah. Sorry, it's a 24-7 cookhouse. <laughs> so if you're out on patrol? Yeah, you can just come in and have a meal at night. Yeah, you can just come in and ask for a meal. As long as you book in advance, you can come in and get one. Yeah, a hot meal. In Orahova, the patrol continues. The troops distribute a free magazine, published by the multinational peacekeeping force, S4. It's got loads of articles about you know, technology, gadgets for the kids. It's mostly aimed at teenagers and uh, it's aimed at kids, but also it gives out uh, an S4 message of, you know, be aware of mines. Um, it tells them about the new laws that are being implemented because a lot of people in villages, they won't have a television, they won't know about it, and they definitely haven't seen a paper. They won't know about the new laws and things, and, and uh, like, where they get licenses for cars, all that sort of thing. They're all in this S4 magazine. But they don't get a local paper? Well, not people in the villages. They only have got electricity in the villages. <laughs> So you wouldn't say it's propaganda then, Sean? Well, of course I wouldn't say it's propaganda. <laughs> it might be, but I wouldn't say it is. <laughs> but, but do the people take them fast? You're losing me, you lose me, you lose me. Oh, who's this? Who's this? Who's this? Yeah, they do. For the kids especially, you know. Yeah. Whenever someone comes to here, they'll, they'll take them. Okay. You have to start charging people for them. Oh, they must have to go to the bank. Yeah, they will take two. Yes. You'll then go to cafes sometimes, just go around asking people how they're doing, what they think. You just find things to do, like kids and that, like this afternoon we play football and that with them, just to build relations up and stuff like that, so next time I come, they'll not be like scared of us and stuff like that. That's the main thing, really. That's what I think, anyway, myself. We, we must know nearly everything there is to know, and every now and again there's some small nugget of information will come and it'll make the big picture a bit clearer. Excuse me, but... Um, like I say, you don't find out big masses of information on his patrols. And at the end of the day, if you didn't find out any information, at least the locals have seen us travelling round and they feel you know, safe and secure with us here. Back at the main base, lunch continues. 
The kitchens here feed 1,800 people a day, and the food bill alone is 50,000 pounds a week. The officer in charge is Staff Sergeant Wood. Down this end here, we have the vegetable preparation area, where the, the civilians prepare most of the vegetables throughout the day for lunch and the evening meal. We then have a salad area here where they prepare all the salads as we put salad bars on both lunch and evening meal for, for all the soldiers, um, including low-fat salads with no, no actual ad, ad, just the vegetables themselves. It's quite healthy, uh, Yeah, we try and give a healthy choice as well. Um, there's, you know, six to eight hot choices, followed by a big salad bar. There's also a sandwich bar as well, so they've got plenty to choose from. Does everybody go for salads or do they like to the chips? Um, winter's coming in, so it's, it's the heart of the chips. I mean, you never stop a British soldier eating chips. But because we feed Dutch and Canadians as well, their diet's slightly different from ours. Um, but the salads are very popular, especially, say, with the Canadians and the Dutch. And in the summertime out here, with the, when the temperatures are up in the 40s, then, you know, most people want, just want a light salad for lunch. Uh, they've got, today they've got common butter, got spaghetti bolognese, Chicken stir fry, omelettes, Canadian club snacks, um, macaroni cheese for the vegetarians. Bit of mixture, really. Most of the kitchen staff are Bosnians. Is it a good job? Yeah, it's a very good job. Why is that? Sorry. Why is that? Why is it good? Good job. Yeah, everything because we have job. You know. Yeah. What do you normally do? I'm clerk. I'm very before in the factory. Yeah, but it's okay. This is where we do the pastry, and we have a chef comes in and does a lot of pastry. We do actually buy a lot of pastries from our local baker. Um, he produces a lot of his stuff for us, and we've actually been down ourselves and taught him and his staff a few more dishes, so they can actually prepare the English type cake, the scone, the Chelsea bun that we we were you know the English soldier is used to. Um, but they do turn their hands to doing cheesecakes and the normal hot and cold sweets in here. We have bottled water. Um, we, we allow, it's a, in the summer, it's about six litres per man per day. We're down to about three litres per man per day. Uh, but it all comes in direct from Italy uh, in bottles for the soldiers to drink. For the soldiers, lunchtime is a chance to unwind. Do you, like, do you enjoy the food here? Yeah, it's quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Considering we don't have to pay for it, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. Ash, you do like pay for it here, and it's got a good variety. Yeah, and the salad bar is really good as well. Do you know where the salad bar is? More national food. Do I know where the salad bar is? Do you? Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What? Okay, I'm fat, I know. <laughs> Please let me go home. <laughs> they kept me here for a year. Aren't you enjoying it? Sorry? Aren't you enjoying it? Yeah, I am enjoying it over it. Yeah, it's better than being at home. Yeah. You're not wasting away exactly, are you? Sorry? You're not wasting away exactly. <laughs> no, I'm not. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. A meal time is one of the highlights of the day. Something to look forward to. Better than the bar, hey? The dog handlers have a problem. One of the attack dogs, Brit, has forgotten how to attack and needs retraining. He's been brought back because his drive levels are not that high. And, and obviously you, you need a, a, a fairly, well not aggressive dog, but you need a dog that's got high drive levels because it's a high risk area. And the reasons why we brought him back up here, or he's been brought back up here, is because we have to get that drive level back up again. And why do you think he hasn't got it? Um, I don't really know. He's, he may be, may be setting his ways. He may be doing a, a set procedure around the a camp and he's not had that much chance to, to have a a free runner, an intruder. The idea is to get him up to a, the same standard as boss, and uh, and slowly and surely we we we, we get in there. Brit's actually been working with um, his handler Jed for uh, roughly 14 days now, and um, there's still a few patchy areas what we need to uh, tidy up, and this is probably the best way we're going to do it. And works out of way. So he's doing, he's, he's doing a patrol now. He's patrolling the areas around the guys' containers. 
um, bringing him up onto the onto the grassy area. There's an intruder, just comes out, winds the dog up. He's issued his challenge, the dog there now. That's quite good that, because before you see, he's been sniffing the bushes mm -hmm. as he's running up, so he's not been actually doing his job. We've actually got him to a level now where he's actually ignoring everything else and he's focused purely on that sleeve. You see where Boss before came straight off the sleeve, right round his handler. He's got to actually Stand do still. that physically. Leave! Bosco! Bosco! Heel! Boss! Heel! And that's another, another step which Jed is actually working towards. And to be fair on the lad, he has worked really, really tirelessly on him. He's worked well. Getting Brit up to speed is a matter of constant repetition, running through the drill again and again until it becomes second nature for the dog. Stand still! Lane, Britain! Brit's improving at the chase and capture, but he's still slow to obey his handler's commands and leave his prey. It may be that he's not yet used to his new handler. But Paul is confident that he'll get the hang of it. He, he's done brilliantly today. He's done far well than I, far better than I expected. But um, he, he can still get better. I, I, I think he'll be one of the best dogs here. If he keeps going the way he's going, I reckon he'll be able to scratch within a week, maybe a week and a half. In Orahova, the patrol has ended. The war criminal they were looking for has not been found and remains in hiding somewhere in Bosnia. The troops have been reminded that intelligence gathering here doesn't always involve major discoveries. But if they're constantly on the lookout for the tiniest sign of something suspicious, trouble can often be averted. The British Army has been here for more than a decade through one of the bloodiest civil wars of the last century. They are part of the multinational NATO force, S4. Their job, to stop a new outbreak of war. Every six months, a fresh regiment arrives. For the first time, the British Army has allowed cameras to follow its Bosnian peacekeepers in action. Today, the bomb disposal team is home on the range, detonating explosives found in weapon searches. Life on tour, doing without sex. Males aren't allowed in the female combination, vice versa. And doing almost without drink. But two cans is not enough. I mean, the first can doesn't even touch as hard as anybody will know. I'm the uh, commanding officer of the Banyaluka Metal Factory here in Bosnia. Uh, this is my train set. Banyaluka Base in northern Bosnia, called the Metal Factory because it's been built around a disused metalworks. The army leases the base from a local businessman, paying £30,000 a month for the privilege. Because this was the only factory in and around Banyuluka area, I mean, it employed 700 people, which was quite a lot. And of course, when the war started in 92, they all left and joined their various army armies, um, and it just ceased production. Yeah, somebody owns it, and we pay him um, rent every, every month for it. I think far too much, but... Who am I to say how much we pay rent for? 30 odd thousand pounds a month rent. A lot of money. 
We support everybody that's in this, uh, in, in this place. Um, we give them life support. Basically, we feed them, we clothe them, and we accommodate them. We make them better if they're ill. We look after their teeth. We give them water. We just look after their, their, their needs. Whether there's not enough yogurts for lunchtime, or the spoons are too big for supper, or breakfast finishes one minute early, yes, I have to sort all those problems out. You have to be a real diplomat. I call myself Ambassador Wright, um, and I, I'm also Commanding Officer Hugs and Kisses, and uh, you have to be very diplomatic. The Banya Luka Metal Factory houses 1,400 people, the multinational contingents of S4, British, Canadian and Dutch soldiers, along with a handful of German and American specialists. One of the units here is the British Explosives Ordnance Disposal Team, EOD or Bomb Disposal for short. They have one of the most dangerous jobs in the army, to defuse bombs on site or take them away and detonate them in controlled explosions. Today they're going out to the range at Manyaka to destroy weaponry collected in recent op harvests or arms searches. No, I suppose you kind of get used to doing EOD and you kind of become aware of exactly what you can and cannot do with it. As long as you have respect for the actual ammunition itself, you, you, you'll be fine. But most of the stuff we get out here is, is fairly safe. There's a lot of it. People have stored underneath their beds and in cupboards and stuff like that, and it's been there for years. And uh, by the time you come to it, it's, it's, it's already pinned, it's, it's fairly safe. Just by taking away all their, their weapons and explosives and everything, it's, at the end of the day, it's just going to save lives. So if they've got nothing to uh, throw each other and shoot each other with, there's nothing they can really do to hurt each other. So, yeah, I think what we do is, is an important job. It de definitely needs doing. Another job that definitely needs doing is manning the main gate. It's been 45 minutes, around another 50 minutes to go. Why should you do an hour, do you? Yeah, and then we go on the VIP gate and just switch off every hour. Okay. At the moment, it's the turn of the Canadians to do guard duty. How long are you on for? <laughs> three months. Oh, mate. You're, on, you're here on gate duty for three months? Mm -hmm. That's, that's all you're doing? That's all we're doing. We've got lots of opportunities to go up to, uh, up to the uh, uh, Bosnian Croatian border. Mm -hmm. Do patrols with the uh, the Welsh that are up there, and mm -hmm. uh, we've also had offers to go on patrols with a bunch of the uh, Brits around this camp as well. So, so you're here day in day out for three months on mm -hmm. the gate. Mm -hmm. Does it not get boring? <laughs> Terribly, <laughs> very very boring, very monotonous. Uh, <laughs> our job is not hard. A convoy of five EOD Land Rovers has made its way to Manyaka after stopping at the ammunition bunker to pick up the boxes of explosives to be detonated. Bomb disposal is dangerous, but after years of training getting to recognize and understand every type of explosive device, the fear goes and the force of habit kicks in. Well, right, listen, guys, the range brief for today. Uh, welcome to Manyaka South Range, you've been here before. Um, the two pits we'll be using I'll show you later on. The explosives area will be kept in the back of my Land Rover and the um, full more infraction stuff is in the back of Simon Fullerton's Land Rover. We'll get the full more infraction stuff out first, lay it out and I've already detailed you out into uh, different serials. Everybody wear helmets and body armour on the range and the, uh, just to remind you that uh, if you see anything on the range here that you don't like the look of or are unsure of, make, make it aware of myself or Simon Fulton. This is a live range used by the VRS Army and goodness knows what they left down here for us. The VRS is today's Bosnian Serb Army. During the civil war here, Serb soldiers were notorious, often half trained and indisciplined. They committed many atrocities. Today their army is smaller and, they say, better organised and controlled. Hey, 
Bill, are we blowing these pits at the same time? Yeah. It's just a combat body armour. Go ahead. Just a gives you limited protection against sort of fragmentation of and if anything did go off always now. Right, what's this bit? This bit that's, protects your heart. That, yeah, that actually will protect your main all like heart. And uh, the rest of it will stop sort of minor fragmentation, nothing major on it. Yeah, I've done so many she's just bring them over. Um, I have a helmet with a mind visor on the front, which will protect my face. What is half of what's here up to about there? Today's menu includes 39 grenades, two high-explosive anti-tank grenades, one rocket launcher, 11 mortar shells, 13 explosive blocks, and assorted rifle grenades and small arms. Sprinkle in some plastic explosive of your own, stir together, and you should brew up a nice little explosion. These have all just been picked up from people's houses. Basically, yeah, m most of these actually come from uh, the pickup at the police station of the day, which is basically just where locals come along to the police station just hand in the weapons that they have and ammunition they have. So this is just from people's houses, yeah, sheds, underneath the beds, things like that. So not from the army, not from the... Lo no, army. these are basically what's left of from the war, basically people just kept ammunition for themselves, etc. The explosives have to be carefully laid in two pits, ready to be packed round with charges for controlled detonation from a safe distance. Been my bag and tribute bag. Oh. Coming up, what happens if it doesn't go off? If it doesn't go off, then it's going to cost me a crate, so it's a On the range at Manyaka, the explosives and ordnance disposal team is ready to lay the plastic explosive and fuses. Then they'll run the detonation cord, det cord in the jargon, back to the firing point a kilometre away. All you need is a small amount to set off the actual explosion inside the actual thing. And then it'll blow from there. Yeah. I mean, I think it's 6,000 metres a second or so in deck called burns at. So it's... And uh, all you do is connect the detonator cord into the PE4. And then that will connect up to the ring main, which will have a detonator, which will set us all off. In a, a big honour. Basically, it's, you start with a small, small amount of explosive, but extremely sensitive, and it just builds up until you get to the P4, which is obviously less sensitive. What happens if it doesn't go off? <laughs> That's when the BDO earns his money, comes back down to see what's wrong with it. it, it basically, if it doesn't go off, or it doesn't go off correctly, we'll wait a, uh, a soak period. <clears throat> and then one of the BDOs will come down and just see what's happened. BDOs are bomb disposal officers, the lucky ones who take the biggest risks. Where does that go, Paddy? That wire? This goes into the, um, into the receiver here. This is a DRFD, it's a demolition remote firing device, and this is what we use to blow our demolitions. This will be linked up till the deck cord there, so the grey cord you can see running along the ground. That's the initiation point. This is the receiver. The receiver stays here at the dam. The transmitter goes with the BDO to the farm point, which is a thousand metres away, and then he can blow the demolition from there safely. On base, the soldiers' quarters are Spartan. Steel boxes stacked on top of each other called Corimex. This is my place. St John's Wood, J1. Nice look at yeah, if you like. Do you really want to? Well, just to see what they look like inside. It's nice. I'm going to go and tidy it up now. Um.
Well, I'm ready to pack. I'm off on 96 hour uh, pass uh, on Friday. Going off to see my wife and children in the UK and the rest of the family. This is my coronet. Got a desk, got a bed, my television, cupboard, alarm clock to wake me up in the mornings. So I'm quite comfortable in here. For the ordinary soldiers, life on tour has its plus points, along with quite a few minuses, compared to what's available back at their home bases in Britain or Germany. Private Katie Mercer, also known as Bubbles, works in admin in the multinational division's headquarters. She's 21 and is normally based in Germany. You're not allowed out of camp unless you've got an escort and whereas I'm in Gutterslow you can just go into town every day after work but here you're confined to camp and you're stuck with everyone for 24 hours so you can't really get away from everyone because all the living quarters is close proximity to each other as well so it's not like you can get away. These two rows are all female, and then the other six rows back there are all male. And they're not so, allowed to mix? No. Ma males aren't allowed in the female accommodation, and vice versa. And what would happen if they got caught? <laughs> you, you're in front of the CO, because it's on orders that you're not allowed to mix with her. Mm -hmm. During the day, it's not too bad, but you're talking after 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, when you're up in the male accommodation. So that's when they, they look at you a bit funny, and you can get in trouble for it. Yeah. Even it's, though you might not be doing anything. Mm, yeah, even if you're just watching a video, they still write out. Mm. I mean, do they tend to get sort of quite friendly or even sort of fall for people when they're yeah, out here? Yeah, there's a few relationships on camp, but um, obviously I haven't been caught. <laughs> Otherwise I'd be in trouble. But yeah, there's a few relationships, because you're always, you're close together for the six months. I mean, six months is a long time to obviously be away from home as well. So... Yeah, so you're not, but so if somebody, but what if they want to just go out with them, sort of quite, you know, like a boyfriend? Fraternising isn't allowed. Really? Well, even if they didn't have sex, they couldn't sort of go out to get, be seen as a couple together? Well, you can, but kissing in, like, Ecos or Tommy Tucker's is going to look a bit dodgy. So I don't think people don't do it. Not, I haven't seen it for the past six months anyway. You're thrown into a situation that if people do like have a relationship together, it's not it's not going to be true, is it? Because you're in a situation that you wouldn't normally be in. Mm. So no, I've do it. There's mm. a few nice people around. Mm. But what um, about the guys? Don't they get frustrated? Like if they're away for six months? Or... I'm assuming that they do. But there is a lot to do if people uh, want to do it. I I do calligraphy in the evenings. Um, I've got about five or six names. That's, it. That's enough to be able to do calligraphy for an hour, once a week. We've got cooking coming up. We've got Serbo Croat. We've got clay courses, computer literacy and information technology. And we've just had a new, another class and it's called um, beer and winemaking where there's about 600 people that's actually asked to uh, attend that. This is inside the uh, metal factory. Uh, it's very big, uh, but it's grim as well and, and gets very, very cold in the winter. Uh, and there again, gets very warm in the summer, but uh, a bit grim, a lot of dust and crap about. As the soldiers are restricted to base, they need facilities to keep them busy. Five-a-side football, tennis, basketball, even a mobile cinema. And it's a wonderful facility. You can get about 80 people there watching films and there's four films on every day. Uh, do good facility. You don't think they're too spoiled? <laughs> I don't think they're spoiled at all. Um, they, come out, they come over here for six months. We need them to be able to enjoy themselves a little. Six months is a long time being away. Uh, I know, I've done a few of them. People get homesick sometimes. Now, you only get homesick when you're at school. When you're at boarding in school, no, some people obviously get homesick. They miss their wives, children, mums, dads. Um, but it's well like boarding school. After you've been back about two or three days, you get stuck into it and just carry on until you come back home again. At Manyaka, the EOD team has reached the climax of the day. 
After hours of painstaking preparation, they're ready for the Big Bang. I can feel the bang coming. <laughs> Is it going to go off, you think? Hope so, hope so, because if it doesn't, it'll cost me a crate of beer, so... A crate of beer? <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to buy a crate of beer yeah. if you mess it up? Yeah. If it doesn't go off, then it's going to cost me a crate, so... It's in my interest for it to go off, or else I'm going to be out, sort of 20 quid. Stand by! Firing! Now! I guess he's not getting the beers in. <laughs> well done, Paddy. Oh, right. <laughs> Shoot, go on. Okay, after this song, the next thing we will do. Talking of beer, it's Saturday on base. The Brigadier has brought in a new rule limiting alcohol consumption, and it's really unpopular. Some of the soldiers feel they could enjoy themselves a whole lot more if the rule was relaxed. When you've had a hard week and you want to go for a drink, two cans just bluntly ain't enough. I mean, if you're not going out there to get paralytic and jump off buildings and cause havoc, but two cans is not enough. I mean, the first can doesn't even touch as hard as anybody will know after a week, so. No, I don't. I think it's good. In, it's okay during the week because people have got work Monday to Friday. But Sunday is a day off for everybody here, so I think the powers to be should uh, maybe relax it just on a Saturday night. And what's the morale like here? Uh, I'm still trying to find it. <laughs> if anybody can get me a map, I'll go and find it. I mean, it is probably one of the worst I've seen here for a while. But that's just because I think it's just because of two camera. When you think about it, it's quite sad, really. <laughs> they get really... There must be a camp full of alcoholics. <laughs> if they get upset because they can't have more than two beers at night. But, uh, no, I mean... You just make your own morale here, really. better when we had more than two cans because it's gone down to a two can rule now. Um, you're only allowed two cans, you get a ration card and two cans it gets marked off on the ration card. When it wasn't everyone was up singing. Karaoke was a really good night, it was fun. And now what, they're a bit inhibited aren't they? A little bit because most people won't want to sing because they haven't had like any alcohol but I'm on ties at the moment. So I'm doing well. <laughs> Time to go home and hand over to Jack. Uh, he's here for six months. Um, yeah, it's time to go home. Uh, 10 months is long enough, I think. Before leaving, Bob gives his successor a tour of his area of responsibility. You've obviously seen Bob in action this week. I have, yes, yes. Um, tough act to follow, I'm sure. Easy. It's going to be easy. What's the most difficult thing do you think you've had to deal with while you've been here? Trying to catch the odd one or two out that sort of exchange Corimex or has a party with alcohol in their Corimex. They must know I'm coming because uh, every time I seem to go down there, it's all clear. And every time the Brigadier seems to run round, he seems to catch them. I don't know why, but there you go. It's the end really now, isn't it? It's yeah. never the end until we get on that plane. 
Well, we step off the other side. And then it's another beginning, of course. Colonel Bob will be a hard act to follow, but it's time for him to say goodbye to his diplomatic duties, dealing with soldiers under the pressure of being away from home, as well as solving international disputes over yoghurt pots and meal times.